Hi, Misha here. And in the past, I've shown a few different Panavia tornadoes, or tornadoes as some say. Swing wing jet aircraft. And they've all been from Corgi. Here's one of them. This is a British Royal Air Force FGR Mark IV. Circa 19, excuse me, circa 2011 as used in uh, in Libya. And Corgi has done several others, and I've shown you a few, including the, uh, the F-3, the air defense variant, and even uh, GR-1P, the Raspberry Ripple <laughs> from the test variant. And so Corgi has pretty much been known for the tornado. But just... In September, Hobbymaster has gotten into the game. And a little unique for them, they've actually released two tornadoes at once. Number one in their collection is actually West German from the Luftwaffe. Circa 1980s is what it says here. And number two in the collection is from the RAF. This is an early GR1, and this is circa 1983. So theirs are both early tornado variants, whereas more of the Corgis you find tend to be the later FGR4, 4A, and so on. Although they have done the 1 and the 1A too, so... All three of these here are 172 scale diecast. And in this video, I'm not going to talk much about history because I've already talked about the tornado and even revisited it a few times. But we can kind of compare and contrast the Corgi and the two new Hobby Masters. So, with that, let's just get into it. Let's begin with the familiar of the Corgi here. It is a die-cast model and uh, is very heavy metal. The positives I'll say about it, it has quite a few moving parts. The stabilizers in the back move and they have kind of little notches. They're a little loose but they still position well on a shelf. And they do have, to, like I said, notches, detents. The wings aren't detented, but they do sweep, and they do sweep together. They are geared together. The uh, canopy does open, or at least comes off, and then you can uh, position it in the open position by slotting it back in a different way. It does have crew figures, but they are not removable. Oh, maybe. There we go. The Pytot tube is pretty durable. These do come with gear up or down, of course. And the ordnance is removable and stallable. And the ordnance on the wings can be manually rotated because it's kind of a ball and socket joint that it plugs into. And the stand is a two-piece, and it plugs into a circular hole in the bottom. It is generally a pretty heavy-duty model. Again, this is an FGR-4, or Mark IV. From 19, I keep saying that, sorry, 2011. And it's British. The uh, Tornado, the Panavia Tornado, like a lot of the swing wing designs, dates back to the 60s. And it was always to be a joint project, although the participants would change. It was originally involving France, and then they would drop out, and then you would get Britain, West Germany, and Italy. 
Also, the Netherlands and Canada were early on interested, but they would soon drop out, leaving uh, the three. West Germany and Britain would have, would have equal shares in the project, about 42.5%, leaving Italy the more minor partner at 15%. And this was going to be a multi-role aircraft. Uh, it fi a fighter interceptor, a strike fighter, or just a bomber. And it would ultimately replace planes like some Jaguars, as well as Blackburn Buccaneers, and quite a few others in Britain. In Germany, it would replace the F-104 Starfighter, and to some extent in Italy as well. The very first test flight was in 1974, and it went very well. What didn't go well was the whole setting up of production. It took some time. So uh, it wasn't until 1979 that the first production aircraft were ready, and Britain and Germany would begin equipping squadrons with these in 1982-1983. And Italy would get theirs a short time later. But once they got up and running, they quickly reached the 500th aircraft mark, which was delivered to Germany. And production would continue until 1998, and they would build just under a thousand. Interestingly, outside of the three partner nations, really the only major user, or only domestic user, excuse me, uh, export user, was Saudi Arabia, who purchased some. So a pretty successful run for a joint project, and unlike the later Typhoon, it wasn't mired in controversy, it wasn't mired in expense overruns, and actually became a model for a European aircraft. Some have called it the most important European military jet. It was quite, uh, quite successful. And it was used in the 1999, sorry, 1991 Gulf War, later in 1999 in Kosovo. It would be used in the Gulf War in 2003, and then in Afghanistan, and then in Libya, and then its final mission for the RAF at least major ones, would be in Syria in 2018. And then it would be retired. Its last combat flights were in January of 2019, and then it was pretty much drawn down in March, and then officially retired on April 1st of 2019. However, Germany, now unified, of course, would continue to fly the Tornado, and still does to this day. Now, like I said, this is a FGR-4. Originally, Britain had the GR-1, and there would be variants 1A and 1B, we'll talk about in just a minute. But after the first Gulf War in 1994, they would begin plans to upgrade, kind of a midlife upgrade, from the GR-1, and this would result in the FGR-4. Between 1997 and 2003, older planes would be converted over. Originally, the RAF would take delivery of 228 GR-1s, and of these, 142 would be updated to the FGR-4. Also, some of the older GR-1s, 1As, excuse me, would be updated to the F. GR-4A. And the basic difference, originally the GR-1 was a low-altitude aircraft, and when they went to the FGR-4, it became more of a medium-altitude aircraft. It would receive newer technology like night vision, GPS, and then eventually data links and so on, because they would continue to update it in the 21st century. In 2009, there was discussion about retiring the tornadoes. Originally, the British planned to fly theirs till at least 2025. But in 2009-2010, they had to have some cuts. And it was between the tornado and the Harrier. 
and as we know, it was the Harrier that got the axe. Therefore, the tornado would continue to fly and be utilized. And then in Britain today, it's being, well, when it did retire, it's basically been replaced by either the Typhoon, the Eurofighter, or the F-35 Lightning. But yeah, this model here from Corgi is of a, a later one, although not the final one. And it comes pretty well armed up. As you see, it has uh, all four wing hard points filled. And it has quite a bit of uh, underbelly uh, munitions here. Now, originally it had some internal targeting and whatnot. But when they went to the four... They did start using external lightning pods, which this has. It also has some cluster munitions. And I believe some, a couple of uh, other little guided bombs and whatnot. And it has external fuel tanks. Then it has uh, short-range air-to-air defensive missiles. Kind of on the side pylons there. Well, it... By today's standards, did not have a lot of hard points. It had three under the fuselage and four under the wings, two under each. It could carry nearly 20,000 pounds in payload. Quite impressive for a jet of its day, and even today. The Navy's Tornado was not a small aircraft. Especially 55 feet long. When the wings were fully swept in, they were just over 28 feet wide and fully deployed out just under 46 feet. So it's not a Tomcat, but it's still pretty big. She was also quite fast. She has two engines for redundancy and could achieve up to Mach 2.2, at least in some variants and configurations. And she had a maximum altitude of about 50,000 feet. And again, she could carry up to 20,000 pounds, which is pretty impressive. She has a crew of two, obviously pilot. And then you have a weapons officer, or in the electronics warfare variant, an eco. And her equipment was pretty advanced for her day and time. And she had quite a respectable combat record in Iraq and other places. So yeah, this is the Corgi we looked at. Well, you've looked at. With that, what about the new Hobby Master? And now uh, here she is on the spinny thingy. Like I said, this is a... GR1, and not just a GR1, but a very early one, circa 1983. So this would have been the original production model style for the uh, interdictor strike variant. I have done a video using my Corgi F3 looking at the uh, air defense variant, but there is a not as of yet, because Hobbymaster just released their Tornado series, a Hobby Master equivalent, but I'm sure one day there will be. So here she is. I didn't put the uh, tanks on. The, uh, the ball and socket that they use, I get it, it's kind of a solution because you want to be able to rotate it. But there almost needs to be a better one. And that goes for both the Corgi and the Hobby Master. As you can imagine, a little peg while it holds in a missile fine. These tanks are I'm not are heavy, but they're a couple of ounces. And they're big, so they usually get knocked. And they don't tend to want to stay on very well. They're not bad. They'll stay on a shelf just fine. But typically what I've found with the Hobby Masters, one of the tanks or whatever and this goes for their uh, their aardvarks or any of them will plug in pretty tight and rotate pretty well but the other one fits kind of loose and wiggle wobbles and then it falls off now what you can do is uh, take a little dab of blue tack and either poke it up in the hole with a uh, like a toothpick or whatnot 
and kind of fill it in and let it stick in there and that, that actually works pretty well but I don't know I kind of like the clean look with just the uh, the bombs on the wings here personal preference but it's my jet but it, you do get the uh, tanks now interestingly these do not have the uh, side missiles on them they're just tanks and this one very much seems to be in a ground attack configuration. So comparing the two quality wise. From what many of you have said in my other Corgi vs. Hobby Master videos, you like the paint schemes on the Hobby Masters better. So what do you think here? I will say they are both quite heavy. And uh, they do both have fully metal bodies and uh, fully metal wings. And it seems like, and of course model to model will vary, that the Hobby Master wings are a little stiffer when you move them. Now one thing, when the Hobby Masters are fully out, there are these little plugs that can go behind them here. And they do this with their aardvarks too, to kind of plug the hole so there's not a gap. Not only does this kind of plug that hole up, it keeps the wing from accidentally getting pushed back if you want it splayed out. Corgi has a different tack on that. They actually uh, have kind of a gear system behind their wings that has a little piece that comes forward and covers the hole, but yeah, so the Corgis is kind of internal Whereas the Hobby Masters is just a little thing you plug in now You would think the Corgi is a better system and I would generally speaking honestly agree The only thing is and I haven't had it happen, but only with one Corgi sometimes that gear system inside because it is a little convoluted and get um, can get out of whack and you have to kind of work on it a bit but to be fair, I did fix the one that I did get a little whack on. But the, uh, the Hobby Master wings seem pretty uh, solid. They don't have a lot of up and down play at all. Whereas the Corgi can sometimes. This one's pretty good. And my GR1P is pretty good. But for whatever reason, my F3 has kind of floppy wings. And I, I know that a few others have experienced that with Corgi. But again, it almost seems like it's a model-by-model model thing. But the Hobby Master wings do seem to be a fit a little better. Again, it has all four hard points under the wings. But I kind of went the more simple route of just putting uh, bombs, one under each. It does also have bomb racks that go under the fuselage. Uh... They actually are a single piece on each side, so, you know, you either get two bombs or none. I guess you could also remove them from their rack. The only complaint I have about that, the, the Corgi front and back are separate pieces, and so they each plug in. With the Hobby Master, the slot to plug them in is only in the back, meaning the front's kind of floating, but it seems tight enough. Worst case, you could always, again, use a little bit of blue tack or even just a dot of glue if your front's a little wiggly, but mine seems quite tight. The Hobby Master, of course, has gear up or down and their single-piece gear, which is nice. They have an opening canopy, and it's actually hinged. It comes up and then back, and then you can kind of slot it in to stay open. So that's kind of a neat mechanism. And it has pilots that can be removed. In fact, as with most Hobby Master, they don't come pre-installed. So I think the canopy is certainly a neater way of doing things on the Hobby Master. And typically, Hobby Masters do have better engine detail. As we move back here, though, to the stabilizers, to the horizontals, I will say... These are plastic, whereas on the Corgi, they're metal. And as you saw on the Corgi, they move. 
on the Hobby Master, they do not. So I really do like the stabilizers, the tail of the Corgi a bit more. Although to be fair, the let's see, is this? Yeah, the uh, vertical is metal, so that's nice. That's nice indeed. But yeah, the horizontals are plastic and they don't move, whereas on the Corgi they're metal, and they do. The Corgi is a little bit heavier. I didn't weigh them, but on the other hand, the Hobby Master usually is considered to be a better paint job and have better panel lines. And the wings are a little less uh, floppy. Well, that was issue two, actually. What about issue one? The German. Germany, or rather, West Germany, was certainly a major partner in the Panavia Tornado project. So much so that the company was based out of West Germany. And the first test flight occurred in West Germany. Although, to be fair, the joint training center was in England. But I digress. They just referred to their variant as the Tornado IDS, IDS. Although they did also use the electronic surveillance variant. Britain didn't use this. They, did, they had the, uh, the GR1A. On the other hand, Britain used the ADF, the air defense variant. Germany did not. It seemed like Italy was the only nation to use all three variants, even though the ADF was actually licensed and borrowed from the RAF. Anywho. The specs are essentially the same. The basic tornado originally had two 27mm cannon developed by Mauser. Later versions may only have one, and some of the um, surveillance versions may have one or none, depending on the configuration. In Germany, they were used kind of as deterrent in the 1980s, while some were conventional and armed either for air-to-air -air interception or anti-tank roles. Some did carry American owned nuclear weapons and even to this day can still carry the B-61 bomb. So it is a bit of a different uh, situation for Germany. The Luftwaffe would receive 200 and seven of the standard IDS and 35 of the electronic surveillance model for a total of four, uh, 242. And the German Navy would initially receive 112 of the IDS versions that were specially outfitted for anti-shipping missions. While the Navy would retire theirs and the Luftwaffe would take over this role, and while throughout the 21st century Germany would scale back their, their tornado fleet to the point now where it's under 100, they are still flying it as of late 2020 and do not plan to replace it until at least 2025. Aside from being used as deterrent in... Uh, the 1980s, German tornadoes were used over Bosnia in the 1990s as kind of surveillance. And in 1999, German Luftwaffe planes would fly their first combat mission since World War II over Kosovo. And they would have limited use and deployment in Afghanistan in 2007, although it was controversial. So they have seen combat, although on a limited basis. As for this here model, it has the same features because it's a Hobby Master. 
hinged canopy, moving wings, non-moving tail. Notice it has a different type of vertical than the British. And of course, a different type of uh, paint scheme. But it is generally speaking the same. That said, its weapons loadout is a little different. Here we have the tank, but it has the missile on the side, which I believe is just a standard uh, AIM 9 Sidewinder. Of course, these are keyed right and left because of. Uh, the missile pylon. And we have this big box that goes underneath. What is this? <laughs> you tell me. Is it a fuel tank? Is it an electronics package? Oops. Like a photo electronics package. Is it a cargo module? What is this? It uses both of the plugins under the fuselage to fit, and fits well. The problem is, you can't fit it on the stand. So that's kind of a gripe. I really wish, on other Hobby Master models, they will sometimes give you two of these, one slotted and one not. I wish they would have given a slotted one so you could put it on and then do the stand as well. Because it's kind of neat looking as it is. It's a pretty bare bones configuration. I've got it in here, but that's okay. Again, I kind of like the keep it simple idea with a lot of these models, especially when you have the swing wing. That's why I didn't put the tanks on again. One of these actually fits very nicely. The other one does fit loose. And again, I could put blue tack in it, but I don't know. I kind of like it, this look. And that's the, that's the nice thing about the Hobby Master and even the Corgi models. If you want to configure it differently, do it. You don't have to glue anything. And if you glue it, if you just use light glue, you can usually take it off without doing any damage. But yeah, actually this was issue one. And it's just circa 1980s. And that tends to be how Hobby Master will do it. Their first issue tends to be more generic. And then they'll do more specific time and place type issues. Whereas Corgi seems to kind of always do very specific aircraft from what I've seen. Hobby Master will sometimes kind of go more general. Although things like tail numbers and everything would be specific, I suppose. So uh, there you have it. I don't know what else more I can say. They are pretty similar jets. And originally, I think they were to come out a little separate from each other. But because of the whole COVID situation and imports from China... They ended up coming in exactly at the same time, and since I had both on order, I just thought, ah, oh, what the hell, I don't have a West German Tornado, be kind of neat to have one. Go with my Hobby Master West German F-104 Starfighter. But yeah, this one is in a more of a kind of well-rounded configuration with air defense. The British one... Definitely seems to be on a uh, on a bombing mission or training at least for it. And the uh, corgi uh, definitively is this thing is loaded down. That's kind of why I got this model. I just thought it was a neat kind of style. Hopefully the new camera and the wider angle means I'm getting more on screen for you. Hope so anyway. But yeah, with this in finally with some new aircraft to talk about, I thought, why not do a comparison model? So, what do you like better? The Corgi or the Hobby Master? And which of the two Hobby Masters do you like better? The West German or the British? Keep in mind that the Corgis are a little cheaper. Not by a whole lot, but you know, 20 bucks maybe 30 so keep that in mind too truth is i like both i have a soft spot for corgi because they've done a lot of british aircraft that 
other brands haven't, so just kind of like that. So yeah, let me know, folks. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in. If you could, like, share, and subscribe. This is Misha. Catch you very soon next time.